a huge blow as the hockey puck continued to shred its... Hey there, Builder Blog. Captain Zach Sparrow here, and this week we are at the Nexus Knockout. Now, I will be doing another video covering the Nexus Knockout and their amazing hockey division, which was really fun to watch. But this week, I... I saw something very interesting I wanted to highlight here on the Builder Blog. During the One Pound Plastic Ant competition, for the first time ever, I saw someone doing well driving with a laptop. Using AI software, um, he made a truly interesting robot that may be the future of combat robotics. So I wanted to start a discussion in this week's episode. What do you guys think? Is this the future? Or is this just one unique builder's take? Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I've been, I build hockey puck and Oreo. They're essentially the same chassis, they just have different attachments that you can put on. I'm going to point out to the blog because this isn't a typical full body spinner. Most, like, this is how most people think of a full body spinner. Uh, this would be like Gigabyte or uh, Captain Shredderator at BattleBots, where the inside of the robot stays stationary and the outside of the robot rotates. And in order to make the robot go forward, backward, left, and right, underneath there's usually a smaller robot with just little tiny wheels that navigate forward, backward, left, and right. And then they have a big motor to spin the overall shell. So in this, your weapon weight is whatever the shell weighs, and then your motor, however big of a motor you can hide underneath the weapon, that's as big of a motor as you get. This is completely different. This is literally just two motors. That's it. And the entire body itself is the weapon. So where this, the max you can get into the weapons, about eight ounces, this robot is a full one pound blade. And the reason you don't see many robots like this is this takes an insane amount of controls and software because how it manages to get forward, backward, left and right is it pulses the motors and applies a brake at just the right moment to make the robot pivot. And there's no way a human could ever do that. It has to be done through software, sensors, and calculation, making it infinitely harder than the typical shell spinner. All right. A moment and explaining to us how you pulled this off. So basically, you have this beacon, you have actually two beacons. You put them on either side of the arena, and that's just for redundancy purposes, for instance. So you attach this to the wall, and if the robot is too close to the wall, you don't have great line of sight of it. So you can switch to the other beacon, which is on the opposing side of the arena, and then you have great visibility again. So, and these beacons just shoot infrared light, which this sensor will see. And there's one on the back too, just in case the robot flips over. And then essentially, once it sees this light, it starts a timer, then when it keeps on rotating really fast, it sees the light again, and then it stops the timer, and then you can compute how fast you're spinning. And since you know you're seeing the light, you know you know that is forward, or you program it to be forward so that it's easier as a driver in order to figure out which way I want to go. You just look at which one's on, which, thanks to this LED, you can <laughs> figure out which one's on because it's visible. And then after that, you can uh, start translating whatever direction you want. Another thing is, um, a little thing that's a little unique is that on the PCB, the light and the light sensor, this is a light sensor, is on the PCB, but there's actually a little bit of acrylic here so you can move that light source up towards and outside of the robot so you can see it. And I know people usually refer to this style of robot as a full body spinner, and I believe they refer to this style as a multi-brain. It's called that... a melty brain, like you're melting your brain out. Because <laughs> the faster you spin, you have more g-force that your motors see, your battery sees, as well as your main board sees. And that could totally mess things up. Like if a wire comes loose, it's, it's over. Well, thank you for taking the time to show this to us today. No problem. Glad you're interested. How that thing works. Alright, so this is just IR light. So all it's doing is it's blasting it on. So you see that's colored right now? That one is on. So that one's, you can see, it's really faint, but blue is seeing it, yellow is not seeing it. 
And that's how you determine like what direction to go in. That's what these are blasting. And it's true for redundancy, because sometimes you're too close to the wall. And you can switch the other side. And then there's just like visible light here for RGB. And then um, yeah, UGC port, microcontroller. That's it. It's really simple. Alright, hockey puck, how you feeling? Uh pretty uh, nervous. Pretty nervous? Is happen. this your first time making it to finals? Uh yeah. Is. is this gonna be your first first place medal? Uh, I don't know. Honestly, this thing has had so many problems with the shell breaking that I'm pretty surprised. I'm pretty surprised that Oreo got out really fast. Hockey Punk is actually doing pretty well. All right. Then who's putting all their money on Polar Bear? Oh, this seems pretty evenly split. All right, now only one of these robots is going home with the championship. I want you to know I've been doing this 20 years and I've always seen controllers in the championship. What's wrong with laptop? It has more buttons. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the hockey puck looks ready. Polar bear, are you gonna leave him in the cold? Yeah. All right. The bots are ready. Audience, are you ready for the championship match? Yeah. All right, here we go. Parts are gonna fly and bots are gonna die. Three, two, one. Fight, robots, fight! Hockey Puck is up to speed. As he's coming in, nicking at the polar bear. The two robots each getting toe to toe. They collide head to head. Polar Bear is getting smacked into the walls as the hockey puck backhands him. Uh oh, parts are starting to fly. I've seen screws going all over the arena. The Polar Bear getting hit into the wall repeatedly. He delivers a good body shot to the hockey puck, but the hockey puck seems unfazed. Robots continue to bounce off one another. Hockey Puck is up to speed as Polar Bear is getting thrown into the wall again and again. And again. And again. Sir, can I have another? We've got one minute left on the clock. Hockey Puck continuing to hit his opponent. As it looks like the Polar Bear may have lost a drive, he's spinning hard on that one wheel. Hockey Puck takes another shot as he's going after the one worky drive left on Polar Bear. With just 40 seconds remaining, this is still anybody's match. Hockey Puck throws his opponent to the wall once again. As Polar Bear smacks the wall to get himself back to center stage. The Hockey Puck starts Poking him again. Poke, poke. As now the hockey puck jumps off the wall. 20 seconds remain. Another big hit. Polar Bear trying to get control as the hockey puck throws him to the wall. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Match over, ladies and gentlemen. Let's have a round of applause for our drivers. All right. I'm going to ask my two rules. Yes. And to our second place victor, I would like to present you with your second place champion. And going home with today's championship is the hockey puck. The one man who can laugh today. Have a round of applause. All right. And. Oh, yes. All right. How would you describe this to a five year old? How does this work? This shoots light, that sees light, and then you do some math, and then you can move forward. Or backwards, or left, or right. All right. Yep.